It's Festool Live, baby. It must be Friday. It must be noon. And it must be Festool Friday. How's everybody doing? Chris is right there with me, baby. He's our cameraman. Over here, we have Big D on the whiteboard. We have Minnie. She's back in the house. We love her. Okay. Online, we have Brent on chat. We also have Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking working with us today. Hey, Jace, good to see you. Uh, let's see. What do I get to announce this week? Okay. Oh, next week, guess what? <laughs> it's summer vacation. Don't worry, we're coming back from vacation. We're going to take a, a week off here and there, but we're going to try to get as many lives as we can. The busy season's coming where everybody comes back from vacation. We want to be make sure we're live all fall, all long. Okay, so we're going to take a week off next week, but we're going to do a best of compilation, episodes one through nine. We're working on it now. All right. Whew. I'm going to get rid of my six-foot pole. I hope everybody's washing their hands and staying safe. Okay, good, good. Okay, so today's topic was posed to us from a few people, and I went, I can't wait, because I'm calling this our unsung heroes of our cordless lineup. So we released the TID. That's our new impact. What, a month ago, guys? A month and a half ago? Yes. All right, so inside that, there were like nine ways to buy the impact. And when I was first looking at it, I was like, oh, man, what about this? What about this? What about this? So what we did is we put all these combo packs together. And missing in those combo packs were some really great tools. But guess what? The big question we're getting now is, hey, what else you guys got in your cordless lineup? So guess what? I'm going to go over some of that now. So I'm going to talk about, listen to this one, the AGC, the DWC, and the BHC. And you're probably going, what the heck is that? Guess what? It's easy. Rotary hammer, correlated screw gun. People have been asking for that all week long, all month long, uh, for a training on it. And also our cordless grinder, okay, the AGC. So let's just keep it simple. I'm going to do this really easy today. I'm going to take each one separately, okay? And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a training like I would a normal training class. Okay. Gamer man, come over here. I want to show you this wicked cool tool. It's called the AGC. It's our 18-volt cordless grinder. This, to me, is one of those unsung heroes. We designed this. This is the North America version because you see this, uh, this um, I always call it an ABBA, but it is an ABBA. It's the spindle, okay? That right there is a 5811, okay? So what goes on there? Anything to your heart's the, uh, wishes. In other words, this is a four and a half inch angle grinder, but it just happens to be cordless. So, hey, if you want to, what do you do with it? Well, you sharpen your uh, lawnmower blades. You can cut steel with it. You can what? Look, get a, put a diamond blade on there and, and you know, notch and scribe uh, a tile. You can put these on. These are blending wheels. So what do you got to blend a, uh, do a fine blending of a uh, weld? You can sand with it. You can put shaping tools on it. You can descale things. Anything that you can think of with a grinder, it just happens to be cordless. Now, I'm going to uh, tell you something, quick one. You ever use a sawzall with a cord growing up, okay, in the trades, okay? What happened when you tried your first cordless sawzall? You didn't go back, did you? Same thing with an angle grinder. I, I mean, that cord is nothing, but boy, once you use a cordless angle grinder and you put a really good battery on there and you get some good run times, you don't go back, okay? So enough saying about that. Let's go through what comes with. It comes with this uh, guide. This is for your typical uh, grinding uh, guide. It comes with a, a great, comfortable, really soft handle. It comes with a spanner wrench, which I haven't used yet. Okay, it comes with a nut, and you know right there, that's seven eighths. So if I put a, a cutting wheel right on there, it nestles there. But here's the kicker. This is the biggest thing I got excited about when I first saw it a few years ago. Check out this locking nut, okay? That's why I've never used the spanner. Here's your ABBA lock right here. This spins on just like this, okay? And I'm basically ready to go, okay? And that flips right down. That's a 5 8 11 nut. And you can guess what? We sell those separately. Just I'm just saying, okay, because most four and a half inch angle grinders use that 5 8 11 ABBA. Okay, next. I'm going to do some cutting right now. I'm going to cut this steel. 
This is an accessory God, okay? But anytime I'm using pieces like this that are put together with compound, they might break apart. And this actually acts as a spark God for me. So the thing I'm going to point out, the regular God that comes with it in this one, I highlighted them today, but there's a little notch right here. This lets you put it on real easy. I highlighted that notch in red so you could see it for the camera. Okay, I'm going to do some cutting right now. So I'm going to take that, and you're going to notice this tab right here. I'm going to pull back. You notice I'm not, I'm not using or I'm not adjusting anything with the battery on? Never do that, because you don't know if you're going to hit the switch or not. You could get hurt. This at top speed spins at 8,500 RPM. So where I line that red up is right here. I'm just going to slide it in so we can see it, okay? And then I'm going to twist it like this, and it locks in on all kinds of different notches right there. So I'm going to put it on there like that, and then right here or right here. Whoopsie! Are we doing? There's one whoopsie. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is whether here or here. I found out the other day. I say whoopsie a lot in live. Okay, go go figure. I've been saying whoopsie my whole life. All right. So I'm going to spin that on because that's how I'm going to cut. I'm going to put this abin nut on just like this. Okay, and I'm going to put my cutting disc on just like this. See how it nestles in there or nests in there. And I'm going to spin this abonnet on like this. I'm going to put it just like this and lock it in, flip my tab. Now I'm going to put my battery on. Okay, slides right in just like this, and I'm ready to cut. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. What did you say? I can't hear you. Okay, here we go. See how easy that is? Now, if, if those sparks were hitting me, which they were, I can adjust that, watch, just like this. I just grab that tab and rotate it so it's in that advantageous position. Check that, Woo! That's better than the fourth. Woohoo! Man, I don't know about you, I could do that all day long. <laughs> all right. So, there's one more accessory I'm going to show. I'm going to take that off and train you on. I'm going to press that button. That's our arbor lock. Okay. I'm going to spin that off. Look how quick change is on this. Wow. We got to name that fast fix. Okay, so that comes off. I'm going to take, see with the red mark, I'm going to rotate it back around. I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to put a wire brush on. Okay, you really don't use the guide for that, but what you want to do is you want to use some kind of hand protection. Okay, maybe you're going to descale, de rust, whatever. Okay, so you want to protect your hand. I'm going to spin that off. I'm going to put this on. Okay, so think about the tools I mentioned, everybody. Okay, you really think about it. Working with drywall or in a drywall situation. I'm grinding steel, grinding concrete. I'm drilling into concrete. Okay, look at that hand protection right there. See that? That'll protect my hand when I'm, when I'm uh, descaling or de-rusting something. That's what the hand protector is. Somebody asked me about it. I thought I'd show how to put that on. And once again, man, you, you, this, look, this is a spongy spongy. We call it Vibrastop handle. So I thought I'd point that out. It's one of our unsung heroes. We've had it for a few years now. So check it out. Okay. Whew. The next tool I'm going to talk about today, all right, is our rotary hammer. I did a post on it the other day, um, and we were talking about it, and I said, let's throw it into the mix here. We had a few questions on it, so I'm going to cover it today. I'm also going to cover the dust shroud, how to use it. Uh, couple it with Bluetooth. You want to talk about a time savings. Okay, so let's talk about the bits first. These bits here, are designed quite, uh, they use SDS bits. A lot of people don't know SDS stands for slot drive system. It was developed many years ago. It's the same SDS bit that all the other rotaries and all the other brands use. Okay, 
to put the bit in to the BHC. It's a rotary hammer. In other words, I've described it in other cordless where the drill is spinning, and it's basically a positive piston hitting it in the back. Okay? To put the bits in, everybody thinks you've got to pull that back? No. You take it just like this, slide it until you find it, and then push it in. To take it out is when you pull this and you pull it out. Now, so drilling into concrete, abrasive material, what I always suggest is just take some light grease and put that on there every once in a while okay, to make bits go in and out nice. It comes with a handle. It comes with a depth stop. Okay, You have two modes right here. Chris, come in here so we can see this. You have hammer drill and you have drill. So think about it. I can drive my screws, right? Okay, well, wait, wait a minute, look. I can do all my hammering, and then I can switch it, and I can also drive my tap cons, because I can take this out like this, and if I have central tech, I can use this adapter. All right, check out the adapter. And then I can put all my fast fix on there. So if I take that, and I just find it like this, now I can drive my tap cons right in afterwards. Take this out like this, put it in my pocket, drill some more holes. I'm just going to put this in here so I can show you how the rotary hammer works. Slides right in. Okay, let's talk about this dust nozzle. I see people sometimes complaining that this swivels too much. Take it off. I wouldn't want to use this. Say I'm drilling into a wall to get all that dust. Okay, what I would do is if I turn this, and you're going to see a little flat spot up here. That comes right off. So I can take that now. Did you know that, Minnie? I did not. See? I'm teaching Minnie how this stuff works, too. All right. Now, I have the Bluetooth watch. I get it going like this. You know, Chris, I'm going to come over here. Okay, see how that goes on there? I'll put this in here now. And let's get it going. I'm going to switch it. Okay? Now, when you use a rotary hammer... Okay, you don't have to put a little pressure. You put some and then back it out. Some and back it out. You let the machine do it yourself. Look at that. Okay. Now, somebody asked me after we did that post, what's the difference between a rotary hammer and, a, and the PDC, the BHC and PDC? That's our hammer drill. If you are choosing a drill for wood, concrete, and steel, I would probably point you in a direction of the PDC, okay? But a hammer drill, yes, it's a lot louder. It's a, a multi-use drill where if you're drilling strictly in concrete all day long, this is a lot faster and a, and a big, big call out for this is you'll see this part between here and here on the rotary hammer. Check this out. That is called vibration stop, and that little buffer, if you're drilling into concrete all day long, will let you drill more holes, okay? Now, we've combined that with the dust extraction. I don't have to suck that hole out right now. I could just put my anchor right in there. Normally, it's a two-step. You drill, and then you got to take some way of getting the dust out. This cleans the entire hole out as I do it. So I thought I'd cover that. Yes, I've covered it in other Festool Lives, but I thought I'd give you a few more tips and tricks on it. Okay. Now, oh, the other thing is it's got a built-in belt hook just like the PDC, which is other, another great feature to it. Whew! All right. Now comes some fun. Um, this is our collated screw gun. And when I say collated, it takes just about anybody's of the self-feeding collated screws. You can buy them from us or you can buy them from anybody else. But we wanted to make it so, not that it was generic, but <sighs> you, could get the, you could use the screws that you already have, okay, and that you're used to buying. But a lot of people think that you have to use collated screws. It doesn't. It also comes with a, another drywall cone. So if you got a, a bucket of screws, okay, you can use them as a onesies like that. It works fantastic. It comes with this magnetic tip. Okay, so if I set it up, when I set it up and I put things in to here, I always put it in manual because auto is, boy, you, that'll spin in your hand. So I always start in manual, and I'll put this cone in just like this, and I'll, I'll set it, okay? And then I can put the cone in just like this, and that's your depth set right there. Okay, so I could take that now, and if I put it in auto, 
Okay? Watch. Anytime I walk up to this, okay, I can set it. And you see how it dimples? If I want to go a little bit deeper, I always got to look. I'm going to go like this. Let's see if that's deeper. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's shallower, so I'm going to bring it back here. And once you set it, that's your depth set. And I can just punch it in like that. Okay, now, I did that because I want to show you a killer feature after I start talking about the collation. Okay, so the cone, and I was talking to somebody about it. See this right here? That comes right out, right? Have you ever tried to change one of these tips on a drywall gun? It's quite difficult, right? Okay, because it sits in there. Or you get some drywall dust. Yes, I'm pretty strong. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows this, but you see that hole in there, man? You see that? Do you know what that's for? If you take it with a tip and you tilt it like this, it pulls it right out. That's what that hole's in there for. And most people don't know that. So it can work like a traditional drywall gun. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build out the magazine for collated screws. I'm going to show you how to set up. We're going to run some. And I'm going to show you the impulse feature because that is a killer feature that a lot of people don't know. Yes, you have a belt hook you can put on either side. Yes, I call this the ladder hook, but it fits a two by four. You can put that on either side, whatever your fancy is. Okay. Whenever you put these bits in, okay, this is a long Phillips bit. I always put the bit in first. I put it in manual. I put it right in the hex, and I drop it in. Then it makes setting up the magazine a lot easier. And there you go. This, and I'm gonna, it's just going to take a screw. This green part right here adjusts my nose, my nose tip for, and if you want to read it, you can set it right here. There's a scale for length of screw. Okay. To set it up, it slides in here like this. You have this green tab like this. So I like you push it. There's an arrow right here. Chris, hopefully we can get that. There's an arrow that pushes it forward. Okay. I'll feed it in like this. So I have it. And then you're going to hear a click. But I want to start it on that one. I'm going to pull it out like this. Now, here's the beauty of our system versus a lot of systems out there. Okay, look. I can move it forward and back. In case I miss a screw, I can come back and get that one I missed. I'm going to now take this and adjust it to the height. Okay, that is a no my tip. So when I start shooting this, I'm going to take it now, look, put it in auto, and we're going to see how I can drop it in. Watch. Okay, see that? That may be a little too deep. Okay, I'm just starting to break the paper. I don't want to do that. So when I come over here, you have a line here. And I, I'm sorry, an arrow. Right here, there's a line, and you have this green dial. So if I'm, go and I watch my line, if I'm going this way, I'm going shallower. If I go this way, I'm going deeper. I'm going to set it one click over. Let's just see what happens when I put it right next to it. Okay, that's perfect. I got it dimpled. You could set it to however you want it. Okay, if I need to get into a corner, I can actually use it like this as well, okay? You have this little channel here that keeps the screws out of the way. It takes kind of the load off of it. All right, so what happens, everybody, with this? That you're in a kind of a dirty situation. I shouldn't say that. A job site situation. And guess what happens? This thing gets wicked dirty, right? Well, you can clean this. It's, uh, what did it, someone once tell me? It's dishwasher safe. Okay, and it's pretty simple. You see this green tab? I take it, and I remove the nose cone like this, or the nose set, and see how it cocks out, and see the spring? I can take that. I'm going to set that aside. I can <laughs> blow it out or whatever, or I can, uh, whatever, wipe it clean. I usually put a little lubrication here, some dry lube here and here, and it works great. If I have to further clean it, Okay, to get down in this mechanism, you'll see. You see this little tab like this? If I take it like this, I don't want to lose any parts. I'm going to come over here with this, Chris. Okay, see it right here? I'm going to take it and pull it toward me. I always hesitate with that, see? Okay, now you got to be careful because there's another spring in here, and you can take it completely apart. This comes out. You can really clean it, set it back in just like this. Your spring goes into the very bottom. 
you press it in and lock it in. So you can do your own maintenance on there. It's wicked simple, super simple. I'm going to take it and I'm going to reassemble it now. Come on back over here so we can see it. I always set it up like this and hold it. I take it just like this. Hey, guys, if I can do this, anybody can do this. I bring it in like this. I turn it around. And what holds it in tension is my nose cone. Okay? And I'm basically ready to go. I can blow that out, clean it, do all kinds of maintenance you want on it. This thing lasts forever. Okay? Okay. Did I cover all of them? Okay. So now I want to do, I want to call out somebody. Uh, we got a message from Jens <laughs> from Germany. And he said, talk about the service. So I think I already have, but I want to mention it again. Guys, This all this contractor grade warranty we have is wear and tear. You need to understand that. It's a full three-year warranty. We're going to pick up everything, labor and parts for three years, all the wear and tear parts. You, it's, it's just an incredible. But one more thing, that's the batteries as well and the charges. Okay, so that's, that's one thing to remember about our cordless. Whew, hopefully I hammered that home today, guys, because, boy, I kind of don't say that too often. All right, what do I got? <laughs> Someone said, where have you been hiding these great unsung heroes? They've been around. This is the one. This, this one right here. Oh, 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 I almost forgot my favorite feature of the DWC. See this right here? Come in here so we can see this, Chris. See how this is protruding ever so slightly? There's a feature on here. You guys probably own this and you don't know this. If I take this, watch. See this? We call it impulse. You don't have to take that out. Look. See how you can just light pressure, you can bump that in, and that screw's good. This one was missed shot too. Watch. Oh, oh. like I said, Whoopsie. light pressure. Whoopsie. Okay, so there you go. It's called the impulse feature, and it just saves you a ton of time on that uh, drywall install. Okay. Hey, Andy, how are you? I see you. <laughs> Andy Sorty, how are you from Long Island? You are awesome. Man. I was always hoping you were tuning in. We have today the Netherlands, always, Montreal, Georgia, USA. We have Poland, Delaware, Hawaii. Oh, it's Garrett. Garrett, you're awesome, Hawaii. Uh, Maryland, Germany, of course. We have Russia. All right, Malta. Malta is there every week with us. Thank you very much. We have Belgium, the Philippines, South Africa, Southern California, baby. Finland, Ireland, I'm coming there, baby. Okay, what's, oh, we have Darren Roach Carpentry, Hawaii, uh, Lithuania, and Derek, do you remember that gentleman I wanted to call out about the DWC this week? Oh, Nick at NCF Home Improvement. Thank you for asking the question, Nick, on what was it, the DWC? DWC. Thank you, Nick. Hey, Nick, I hope I answered your questions today. All right. I think that's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, next week, we're on summer vacation for just one week. Vi <laughs> Chris is heading to Las Vegas. All right. Big D, Minnie, Brent, thank you. Jason, thank you. And everybody, thank you very much for watching Festool Live, and happy Festool Friday.